The High Museum of Art in Atlanta, Georgia hosted a delightful temporary exhibition called In the City of Lights, Paris from 1850 to 1920. The exhibit primarily showcased holdings from the highest collection representative of Paris, France during that innovative and tumultuous 70-year period from the beginning of the Second Empire through the Great War. Since I had just spent several months studying and living in Paris, this will be a great way to relive Parisian history in the American South of all places. The pieces on show here do highlight that life in the modern city was not always the romanticized glitz and glamour we tend to consider. There was a harsher side to life especially experienced by the working classes. In the mid-19th century, Paris was truly modernized through Baron Haussmann's urban revitalization projects, which demolished the majority of the city's old buildings, replacing them with new, relatively uniform structures. This even affected the oldest area of the city on the Ile de la Cité, upon which the Notre Dame Cathedral stands, though many important landmarks like that were spared. This is a 1925 etching of Notre Dame by a traveling illustrator from America, John Taylor Arms. Here is a photograph of Notre Dame by Eugene Atje, a photographer who spent decades starting in the 1890s and through the 1920s taking photographs around the city of Paris, producing an important and arguably artistic urban documentary within his portfolio. Given his set of personal rules and methods, some consider Ajay a forerunner to surrealism. The surrealist photographer Man Ray found Ajay's work to be a huge inspiration, and purchased many of the old photographer's pictures shortly before his death. This is The Vampire, an 1853 etching by Charles Marion of an iconic menacing gargoyle on the Tower of Notre Dame. Marion is known to have had some mental illness issues, which possibly contributed to the dark and gothic nature of most of his prints. Here is a long-gone Ile de la Cité staple, La Belle Jardinière, which was one of the oldest department stores in Paris that had opened in 1824. This photograph was taken right before it was demolished. The new Hôtel Dieu Hospital replaced it in the 1880s. This is an amazing poster designed by Eugène Auguet in 1902. It depicts a priest who takes on the appearance of a satanic bat that is perched on the domes of Sacre Coeur Basilica, which was under construction at the time. At the bottom it says, Voila l'ennemi. Here is the enemy. Oge made this for the cover of La Lanterne, an anti-clerical, anti-Catholic newspaper, and in the process he may have helped inspire Batman. This is an 1852 etching of saint Etienne du Mont, a magnificent historic church in the Latin Quarter, it is seen through a narrow opening highlighting the cramped atmosphere of the medieval city, even though the church does have an open square and is flanked by streets. And this is Eugene Ajay's photograph of the immaculate Renaissance-style rude screen inside, which by the way is definitely worth seeing on a visit to Paris. Here we can compare two depictions of a famous Montmartre landscape by two Parisian legends. They documented the Moulin de la Galette, which was built in 1622. This is Marie Citrilla's lithograph of the mill, which is a remnant from when Montmartre was in the countryside north of Paris, but by 1924 when he made this it had been fully engulfed into the city. And here is Ajay's 1890s photograph of the mill, which became the namesake of a nearby popular working class social hall and eatery, famously depicted by Renoir. Here's an Ajay photograph of a Louis XVI style building near the Place Vendôme, which had survived Haussmann's revamp. Sadly, the reliefs on that house were removed shortly after Ajay photographed them. Here's an 1854 panorama of Paris by the Bisson brothers, who operated a famed early photography studio. They captured this from the roof of the Louvre. Back then, the skyline was dominated by the Pantheon and the Val de Grasse as opposed to the Tour Eiffel and Tour Montparnasse. The Pont Neuf or the New Bridge, is actually the oldest surviving bridge in Paris, having been completed in the early 17th century. Here's an etching of the view of the Pont Neuf from the smaller Pont Saint-Michel a little further up the Seine. This beautiful colored woodcut by Auguste Louis Le Père shows the old Palais de Justice as seen from the Pont Notre Dame in 1889. This is Ajay's shot of the Passage Marais, a dilapidated working-class alley near the Gobelin Tapestry Factory as it appeared in 1925. 
Soon after Ajay took this photo, the residents were convicted and it was demolished, though the city relocated some impoverished residents into even worse conditions. This 1879 scene shows the Place Breda, a square in a working class neighborhood of Mamarcha which no longer exists during what was the coldest winter on record. The Rue Mouftar in the Latin Quarter is one of the city's oldest neighborhoods, and somehow evaded Haussmann's slaughter, so Ajay photographed it here in 1899. I can definitely relate to this lithograph by the cartoonist Honoré Daumier of a woman getting irritated on an omnibus back in 1862. While significant advancements have been made in public transportation, it has only gotten more crowded. This scene also confirms the universal concern about who's going to sit next to you on the train. There can be some strange people on the metro. Here is the train station at Batignolles as it appeared around 1890. Back then it was really only used by the Parisian bourgeois to reach their country homes in the west and south. This is a lithograph by the Nabi group artist Pierre Bernard of a Parisian street corner from 1899. And this is an Edouard Villar lithograph of the Tuileries Garden. A rather unique interpretation of the historic garden done in the style of a Japanese woodblock prince. These busts by Jean-Francois Raffaelli depict the unglamorous appearance of older men. The placards describe a Parisian trope that emerged around this time of the quote, cantankerous working class pensioner set in his ways. These are the street musicians snapped by Ajay around 1898. There's an old man with a pump barrel organ who's working with a dancing child. Here is the Society Party by Georges Stein, the scene of a refined fête mondaine or society party around 1900. The aristocratic ball is illuminated by newfangled electric lights strung around the pavilion. Here's a Eugene Ache photograph of a homeless man sleeping on a bench. And this one shows the backbreaking work of street paving in the new city for low pay. Here's a street market at Courbois drawn in 1908. Theophile Steinlin made this drawing called the Roundup for the Gilles Blas Illustré newspaper. This sensational cover is about some 1891 night raids on notorious haunts of prostitution and the women being chased out by policemen. Here is a poster advertising La Fournaise, the furnace which was a novel that was being published in installments in a periodical. That was quite common back then. Poster designer Maurice Dumont painted this for a book cover titled Women for Everybody. Les Femmes à tout le monde. It's a satirical scene showing the fraught relationship between women and the different men in their lives. That's a photograph of a dog walker on the Avenue du Bois de Boulogne. There is a prominent dog walking culture in Paris, but that has always come with some issues like the unclean dog waste. Seriously, people do not clean up after their dogs. Here is a bust of Emperor Napoleon III. Napoleon III was Napoleon Bonaparte's nephew. He seized power in 1851 and established the Second Empire. Jean-Baptiste Carpeau, one of the greatest sculptors from that period, carved this regal bust of the former emperor during his exile in England. Not everyone revered Napoleon III. Henri Daumier made this caricature with exaggerated features. This was about as satirical as the imperial government would allow him to be without arresting him, as the previous King Louis-Philippe had done. Victor Hugo thoroughly shaped popular perceptions of historical Paris through his novels like Les Miserables and The Hunchback of Notre Dame. Though he was exiled from Paris for 15 years during the Second Empire, he was still about as highly revered as a man could be. This is a sketch of Hugo on his deathbed in 1883. Auguste Rodin was tasked with sculpting a significant memorial sculpture for Victor Hugo. He created this small bust as part of his various studies. This is an example of what the finished product looked like. Here's a photo of George Sand, one of the notable romantic writers whose real name was Amantine Lucille Aurore Dupont. She was notorious for subverting gender norms. And that's a portrait of one of the most celebrated actresses of her day, Sarah Bernhardt. This is a drawing of Bernhardt performing as Dophia's soul from The Woman of Samaria, a biblical play that was specifically written for her to act in.
This is a sculpture of a petite Parisienne. La Parisienne was a stereotype developed at this time encapsulating the quintessential Parisian beauty. Quote, effortlessly elegant and sophisticated. Here is a 1900 cover for the Jeux Bla Illustré magazine, showing the Parisienne in her natural habitat trying on new hats at a department store, as her husband watches on unenthusiastically. Most women did not get to live out the Parisienne lifestyle. These are errand girls, Young women who were hired to run errands and make deliveries for households and merchants. This photo shows a Parisienne flaunting her extravagant fashion in the Bois de Boulogne, a huge park on the west side of Paris. Here is one of Georges Lefebvre's lithographic poster advertisements. This was an eye-catching new illustration style for Parisian poster art that developed in the late 19th century. That's a fantastic illustrated visitor map of the new city of Paris around the turn of the century. Throughout the 19th century, the sprawl increased immensely to 20 arrondissements. And on this map, I was able to figure out where I lived in the 20th arrondissement near Père Lachaise Cemetery. It looks like it was right at the edge of the city back then, but not anymore. That is an Edgar Degas etching of one of his classic ballet scenes. The Opera Ballet, which opened in 1864, became extremely popular in Paris by the time it moved into the new Palais Garnier in 1875. Themes regarding the ballet were consistently explored by Degas and Louis Le Grand, who did this drawing. This is an etching by Édouard Manet of Lola de Valence, a famous singer and dancer with the Royal Ballet of Madrid who performed in Paris in 1862. Next to the Manet, there is a lithograph by Henri de Toulouse-Lautrec. This is a magnificent rendering of an innovative dancer from the American Midwest named Loey Fuller. She became extremely popular for her almost magical performances. She would wear long dresses that would billow around her as she danced, enhanced by specially designed lighting effects. Here Toulouse-Lautrec attempted to capture that essence, though her dress looks more like an abstract blob. Yvette Gilbert was another Belle Époque icon, known as a singer and actress of the Moulin Rouge, Henri Gabriel Ibo made this lithograph of her at the height of her fame around 1895. Here's another Toulouse-Lautrec lithograph of Madame Regine, a vaudeville actress who had her own Théâtre Regine in the early 1900s. Ibo created this pastel of Madame Jeanne Bloch. She was known for her comedic acts and larger-than-life persona, which entertained late 19th century audiences at café concerts and cabarets around the city. Here is a lithograph by Edgar Degas called The Dog Song, depicting Emma Valadon in the middle of one of her popular comedic stage acts during the 1860s and 70s. Here is the Café Singer from 1885. This is actually one of only three known prints by the prominent pointillist Paul Signac. That's a classic Jules Charest poster promoting the Folie Bergère Music Hall and Theatre. They were famous for their elaborate sets, effects, and plentiful nudity. Their vaudeville shows featured many famous performers over the years like Yvette Joubert, Louis Fuller, and later on Josephine Baker. Parisians of all social strata love the circus. So here's a fairground circus scene from 1895. Interestingly, it is focused on the attendees in the stand instead of the circus acts themselves. Here's a drawing of the Cirque d'Ete, the summer circus which was renowned for equestrian shows at its 16th side Arabian-inspired theater on the Champs-Élysées. There are several depictions of women drinking absinthe, a strong liquor that became popular at the time. Many modern Parisians came to view absinthe as the drink of liberation due to the misconception that it brought on hallucinations. It mainly just made people really drunk and more depressed. This is At the Café by Constantin Guy. The prominent Parisian writer and critic Charles Baudelaire considered this artist to be the painter of modern life par excellence, so take that for what you will. Here's a Charles Moron scene of the Casino de Montmartre, one of the great café concerts around Montmartre which hosted popular singers. And last but not least, puppet shows were also popular in Paris. These folks are in a park watching Guignol, which is similar to Punch and Judy. So that was an intriguing dive into Belle Époque Parisian society. 
It was definitely small scale, but pretty good given the museum relied on itself and the local community and not big international loans. The High Museum of Art is fantastic, so make sure to check out my other videos featuring the permanent galleries, which does include an excellent French Impressionism and Early Modern collection. Also check out my other videos featuring Paris, France, as well as other art exhibitions, museums, historic places, and much more around America and Europe. Additionally, please like this video, share it, and subscribe to the channel for more. Thanks for watching!